All right. Hey, everybody. How's it going? Congratulations to all the champions who were just announced. So good job for you guys. Keep it up. And uh, my name is Barry Rosen. Oh, my slides disappeared. My name is Barry Rosen. I am the offering manager for Notes and Domino on-premises. Uh, we're moving towards what we call agile squads uh, in ICS. Um, so I'm also on the messaging squad, so I also have responsibility for a lot of the other products like ICAA, IMSMO, um, Verse On-Prem, we'll talk about that as well. So uh, welcome everybody. We're going to walk you through the Notes and Domino roadmap. We're going to talk a little bit about what we did in 2016 and what's coming up in 2017. So 2016 has been a really busy year when I look back uh, for me, for ICS, uh, for Notes and Domino. We've done a lot of work this year. Uh, we've got a couple of the items that we released this year on this deck. We GA'd IMSMO. That's IBM Mail support for Microsoft Outlook. That was formerly known as Hawthorne. That was in a limited availability state for a couple of years. Uh, we GA that this year. We support 2010, 2013, 2016 Outlook client. And that is for, ver that is for cloud and on-prem. And you'll see, you know, we'll be talking about our open client strategy and, and what that really means. Uh, we also uh, GA'd uh, here on the bottom Domino X pages for Bluemix. Uh, in second quarter 2016. We also GA'd ICAA 101. I also GA'd same time 901. And the big announcement that went out yesterday is we're going to GA Verse on Premises December 30th. So that's a lot of things that we GA'd this year. Uh, one of the other things that we did this year is we announced officially, we had an official announcement on September 13th that we are extending the support of Notes and Domino through at least 2021. So why did we do that? You know, normally we just put out a new release and that just automatically extends the life cycle of the product. Well, we're not going to be doing that anymore. We're moving to a more agile delivery method. We're calling that feature packs. I'll talk about that. We'll get into some details on what that means and what those contain. Uh, uh, in a couple of slides here. Talked about Verse on Premise, some lo lots of good stuff. I hope, I see some of the beta customers in here. All the champions have been baiting, been in the beta program for Verse on Prem. We've gotten a lot of good feedback and we're going to GA that, you know, just as we said we were going to do when, uh, at Connect, we announced we were going to GA this year. We'll barely get it in uh, this year. All right, so you know, what, did we, what did we announce? We announced 901 support extension, um, both server and client, okay? So Notes and Domino supported fully through at least 2021. Uh, Verse on-prem, that's going to be our premier uh, HTTP access point for Notes and Domino. If you did not know already, Verse in the cloud is based on Domino, and now we're just going to take the UI that everyone in the cloud can have, and we're going to give that to our on-premises customers. We also announced 8.5 uh, end of support, uh, and that is a two-year announcement. So in September of 2018, uh, that will be out of support. Now, if you need to purchase an extension for up to three years, you can do so. There are some requirements around that. You have to have a reason why you need that. You have to be, have a plan to either migrate away from us or have a plan to upgrade to 901. Otherwise, you're not going to get extended support. Let's talk about feature packs. So prior to this year, uh, typically what we did is we would release what we called fix packs. We'd have a, a, a point release, and then in between each point release, we would have fix packs, and those were downloadable on Fix Central. Um, now we're not going to be doing that anymore. We're going to be moving to this very agile type of release strategy. Uh, we're renaming what used to be a fix pack. It's now going to be called a feature pack. Why is that? Because now it contains features as well as fixes. Uh, we're also going to be applying this same methodology uh, to same time. 
So 901 uh, for same time, just like 901 for notes and domino, is most likely going to be the last major point release of the product. But don't fear, you know, don't fret because you'll still be getting new features. They're just going to be coming in what we're calling feature packs. So what is a feature pack? Uh, you know, our objective is to really accelerate the delivery of the features. Instead of waiting every 18 months, two years, three years for a point release that has a bunch of new features, every quarter you're going to get a, a feature pack that has five, ten new features for the client, for the server, for the designer, possibly new templates. We'll talk about that as well. Um, and we're moving to this because it gives us a lot more flexibility to react to the market. And my job as an offering manager is to listen to you guys, the market, our customers, our business partners, understand what you need, what's right for your business, what's right for your customers, and then deliver those features. And so we'll be able to prioritize those features. We'll be able to uh, release them much more quickly than we have in the past. So 901 is going to be the baseline release and all the future updates will be delivered as feature packs on top of 901. They are cumulative. You don't need to install 98, 789 to get to 10. You just have to do the latest one and that has everything in it. Um, and these are gonna contain the core technical elements for the platform to support the longevity of this platform to make sure that it is up to date. It's got the latest functions, features, uh, versions of software, uh, and we will be uh, targeting a quarterly release cadence for that. So this is just uh, a timeline, basically showing in a graphical manner of what we've done, what we're doing. You can see on here we've got some other things on here in green. We've got the application modernization announcement. I'll talk a little bit about that as well. That's going to be at Connect uh, 2017. So we're going to have some big announcements at Connect 2017. Uh, around application modernization. We're going to have the entire 2017 Verse on Prem roadmap unveiled at uh, Connect 2017. And as you can see here, you know, the feature packs will also be releasing Verse on Prem at a regular cadence. We're going to not do exactly quarterly for Verse on Prem. We're thinking about three times a year for Verse on Prem, and we'll get to that in a minute. So, what are some things that we've already shipped? You know, uh, we had a lot of items that we talked about for 902, Domino Next. We had a bunch of different names for this big release that we were thinking we were going to do, um, but we're not going to do that. We took a lot of those items and we have released some of them and we're going to release the rest uh, in a regular cadence. So uh, what have we released? Uh, Mac 64-bit client, uh, Windows 10 support, sidebar plug-in updates for connections we talked about. Outlook support, we GA'd that. Uh, browser plugin, uh, that is going away. So we're replacing that with ICA. That is the IBM Client Application Access uh, tool, uh, which allows you to access your applications in a standalone uh, program. Uh, so if you want to move to an all clientless uh, desktop, you want to have Verse or iNotes or Outlook as your primary vehicle for viewing your mail, you can do that and then you can deploy ICAA uh, as your methodology for your users to access the old notes applications. Um, so as we know, most of the browsers are moving away from the plugin uh, methodology. Chrome doesn't accept plugins, uh, Edge doesn't accept plugins. So we've gone away from the plugin. We're going to remove that from the kit in uh, feature pack eight. So in Feature Pack 8, you will no longer be getting the Notes Browser plugin. You'll get ICAA. ICAA also has what we call an AUT functionality, which is an automatic update functionality. So you can deploy that one time. And if you so choose, you can set it to search the, for future updates. So it will update itself anytime something new comes out. And we actually just released, I think about two or three weeks ago, a new version of ICA, one of the, uh, I think it's like 101.1. .1. Uh, so one of the features that we uh, put in that release is the ability to use the Install Shield Tuner uh, to customize the deployment and installation and create custom installation package, packages for ICAA. 
Um, so on the domino side, these are some of the things that we uh, have done already. We've got the designer uh, side as well. All the designer things we released to OpenNTF, and uh, our strategy from a designer perspective is to release to OpenNTF first, and then we will incorporate those into uh, the future releases into the designer client. All right, so let's talk about uh, notes and domino. This is really what our roadmap is. So I was hoping that today, instead of high priority, I could have feature pack eight. Um, we've decided we're not going to show any kind of uh, feature pack commitments unless we have gained internal commitment on that. That's my job. What I do as an offering manager, uh, as well as listening to all you folks, is I have to go to my superiors uh, internally and present this to them, get agreement from support, from marketing, from services, from development, from offering management, from Ed Brill, uh, to make sure that everyone is on the same page and that we all agree on what we're going to do. So actually, right after this, I have a call in the US that I'm going to be presenting this tonight. So hopefully tomorrow, when I give you guys this, uh, this deck, it will say feature pack eight instead of high priority. So in your minds, you can just kind of think where it says high priority, these are the items that we have planned, uh, not committed. In about two hours, we will have the commitment, hopefully, if everything goes well. Everything that says high priority will be feature pack eight. Uh, and then at Connect 2017, we'll have feature pack nine as well. From a timing perspective, we're looking at March for feature pack eight. Our, we have a stretch goal of end of February, so hopefully at Connect, we can say this week or next week it's going to be released. If not, it'll be sometime in early or mid-March, depending on how these things go. We all know how it works with development. Sometimes it doesn't always go as planned. So let's look at the top item on here, okay? Uh, from a client perspective, we're adding support for the Java 8 runtime. So one of the things that we're doing from a Java 8 perspective is we're splitting that delivery ac across two feature packs. Feature pack eight is going to focus on runtime support. Feature pack nine is going to focus on the compile time support. So hopefully all the developers in the house understand exactly what that means. I'm not gonna take too much time to get into the technical details. So you see under medium priority, the top item is to upgrade OSGI and Eclipse to support the Java 8 compile time. So there will be a little bit of a gap between the runtime and the compile time support. For Java 8, we don't expect it to be more than about 90 days, okay? So in order to get this out the door to upgrade Java 8, we split it, split it across two feature packs. Otherwise, we would have had to wait for everything. Oh, one other thing, really awesome news. Yesterday, we released the beta for feature pack 8 on the server to all of our design partners, and I think we also did the same to our champions as well. So if you're a champion or you are a design partner, you can go to the community and download Feature Pack 8 beta for the server so you can test this out and give us feedback before we release this in March. One of the things that I really asked the development team to do this year and moving to Feature Packs is make sure that we're putting out quality products. I don't want to release a Feature Pack and then see on Twitter five bugs that we missed. So we need your help to beta test these things so that when we do release them, we have a robust release and we don't put anything out that's broken or will break your environment. Sometimes we can't catch everything um, that you guys have in the wild in our test environment. We have test scripts, but they don't cover every single scenario and that's where you guys come in to help us. So that's some great news is we're going to also be allowing design partners and champions to beta test all of our feature packs before they're released in gold form to the public. So that will really help the quality of the product and it helps you to test out what we're doing and make sure that we're doing the right thing here. So, you know, I'm gonna go on to the next thing. So these are for the notes client. They also apply to iNotes. And from an UI perspective, we're not gonna be making any changes to iNotes. Verse on prem is going to be our primary platform for web-based access for Domino on-prem going forward. We will still be releasing features. As you see, a lot of these features will also apply to iNotes, but we're not going to be doing anything to the iNotes UI. 
All right, so this is part of our application development strategy. This is a piece, this is a prong of the application modernization strategy that you will hear more about at Connect. Look at high priority. We'll call that feature pack eight for now. Everything on here except for item number eight, which is ADFS 3.0, this is all application development specific items, okay? We are getting these out to you as quickly as possible. This will be early 2017. We talked about Java 1.8 runtime. We're upgrading the OSGI, OSGI on the Domino server. We're gonna move views outside the NSF. We're gonna have back-end LotusScript and JavaScript access to the ID vault. We're going to increase the document summary limit from 64K to 16 megabytes. We're gonna have source control for, with swiper integration for designer. We are going to have a pub names template update as well. And we are gonna have a couple of new uh, at commands as well. So we are doing a lot of work on the platform of Domino from an application specific area in feature pack eight. You can then see in feature pack nine, which is the medium priority items on here. We'll have some other items here, NIF concurrency enhancements for, for inline view updates. We'll also extend the compile time uh, portion of Java eight as well. Um, and then we've got some of the lower priority items around search and stability improvements that we're finding from Verse on Prem, and I'll talk about that in a moment. All right, so template updates. Uh, we're going to follow a very similar cadence with the template up updates as we are with the feature pack. They're going to be a separate download than the feature packs. It will be a zip, one for English, another for all the other supported languages. Most likely we'll release English first and then we'll release the other languages afterwards. They will be posted in Fix Central for your download. And we're not going to necessarily have a template uh, package for every feature pack because only when a feature pack requires a template change will we do it. Um, and so I don't have a list for all of the templates that we have planned to update right now. It's going to be an agile list, so if there's a feature that we're putting out that requires a template update, we will update the template based on that. And here's just another graphical uh, inter uh, timeline, you know, similar to the one I showed before. This is specific to templates. You can see here that it, you know, for feature pack eight, we're going to have the pub names. We may not do it for feature pack nine. We'll probably maybe do it for feature pack 10. It may not be every release. And it's slightly, you know, a little bit behind the feature pack updates. So, you know, pretty much uh, in alignment with the feature pack updates um, as well. So let's talk a little bit about verse on-prem. So I'm sure you guys have all heard the statistics. These really apply to me and IBM. I don't know if they <laughs> apply to everybody else here. Time spent in collaboration activities have ballooned by 50%. In the last two decades, we have so many tools. We have same time, we have notes, we have verse, we have, uh, now we have Watson Workplace. Um, we have um, social media, we have Twitter, we have Facebook. We are getting bombarded by information these days. One of the things that we're trying to do from an IBM perspective is how do we prioritize that and make sure that you focus on what's important to you now that we take you out of reactive mode and we put you in that zen space of working on what is important now, okay? And when we talk about verse in the cloud and when we talk about cognitive and we talk about virtual assistance and we talk about inbox prioritization, that is where we're going, okay? People spend 80% of their workday on meetings, phone calls, and emails. That is me, I'm in meetings eight, nine hours a day, people are telling me all these things that I need to do, when do I have time to do them when I'm in meetings all day? You know, help me out here, help me schedule, help me prioritize, help me decide what email needs to be worked now, what, do, what can I ignore, what can I deal with later, that's what we all need help with. So we took that as an opportunity in our portfolio and we're going to use cognitive and we're going to use design thinking to solve some of these problems. So verse email was specifically designed to keep the most important contacts and projects front and center, right in front of you. You've got your important to me bar. 
Uh, you know, me, I have my managers, my directs, uh, the people that I work with in sales, probably Ufi's in my importance in B-Bar. So I can come in in the morning or when I'm on vacation and I come back and I have 500 emails because I've been out for a day. Where do I start? I want to see what did my boss send me? What did Ufi send me? What did Drew send me? You know, I just want to see those things first. Advanced analytics and cognitive tools will help me prioritize that. And I heard before, I don't speak Italian, but I did hear a question about cognitive and verse on-prem. We haven't quite worked that out yet because the cognitive piece is in the cloud. Where you may see that surface for an on-premises type of situation is on the mobile side, on the client, with an inbox prioritization on the mobile client. Um, so that may be where you get that, get that. We're trying to figure this out. So initially at GA, uh, Verse on-prem won't have the cognitive pieces. But what you need to know is everything that happens in the cloud for Verse will eventually happen on-prem, okay? Uh, so all of the improvements that we make, all of the UI changes, all of the advancements, so that will follow on-prem. Right now, there are things that we don't have in the cloud, basic features that we absolutely have to have. Once those are done in the cloud, we'll put those on-prem. Why IBM, why now? You know, we're about choice, security, and value. We want to extend the value, the security, and the choice of your existing domino infrastructure, and now you can use Verse on-prem. So this may be the third time you've seen the slide. I was in UFI session, you know, so UFI and I have some of the same slides, so I won't spend too much time on this particular slide here. But this is really verse on premises. Ufi showed it in his session. I don't know if all of you were there. Hopefully you were. Uh, virtually, it's the same. It's not exactly the same. It's very close, okay? From a UI perspective, it's the same UI. There's a couple of slight differences, and I'll get into those details now because I was just on a call uh, with our development team. They were enabling our, our support team. Everyone is getting ready to support this product December 30th when this goes out in the wild, um, and everyone's really excited about this. There are a couple of minor limited uh, things that uh, we didn't make it into GA. So in order to make this GA this year, we had to give up a couple of things. So I'll, I'll talk about some of those things uh, in a moment. You know, what's the value here? Uh, basically, provide the same verse uh, UI that you have in the cloud to our on-premises customers. This is going to be entitled through the Cal, okay? So anyone that is current on SNS for their Domino Cals, they will have access and free entitlement to download Verse on Premises. It's a zip file. You put the, uh, you just put this file on your server. Uh, you change some INI parameters. You reboot. You're good to go. We're not requiring the files and profiles piece, which is the social aspect. We are recommending that in order to get the entire social experience. If you don't have that, you won't see the people's pictures in the important to me bar. You won't get the uh, ability to share files. You won't get the ability to preview a file. You won't get those abilities if you don't have files and profiles. Now, files and profiles are also entitled to all of our notes and Domino customers as well. So one of the things that we did on the September 13th announcement is we extended the uh, connections and files, connections, files, and profiles uh, entitlement to version 5.5. Prior to September 13th, uh, Domino 901 was entitled to connections 5.0. So we've extended that to 5.5. We're recommending 5.5 CR1 as the base release. That is what we've certified. That's what we've tested against Verse on-prem. So if you're CEO comms, dual entitlement, uh, messaging, collaboration express, you will get access to this. Now, you have to be current on SNS. And one of the things that I didn't mention, we did not publicize this, but also in September, we locked down Fix Central. If you are not current on SNS, you can no longer go to Fix Central and download fixes and in the future feature packs. Because we're now adding features, we have a lot more value than just a fix. Contractually, when you look at the contract, when you, when you purchase uh, notes and domino, it says you have to be current on, on your SNS in order to get the fixes. We didn't enforce it. It was a little bit of a loophole. So 
Notes and Domino on-prem is a perpetual license. So what that means is you buy that one time. If you decide you don't want to pay SNS, you don't have to. You don't get support. Um, but, and you have to stay at that version that you are. But what customers were able to do for a long time was stop paying SNS and continue to download uh, fixes. No longer the case. Not going to talk too much about this slide. This is just some of the additional values here. You know, um, one of the nice things about Verse on Prem is that if you want to move away from the rich client, if you want to move away from the notes client, if you want to move away from the Outlook client, you can do so with the uh, Verse on Prem. And what that does from an administration perspective is that allows you to make the updates on the server and not have to touch the end user's workstation when a new feature pack comes out. Because now with the feature packs, they are going to be a little bit larger than a fixed pack because now they have features. So it makes sense that it's going to be slightly larger package that you'd have to deploy. If you're a large organization, IBM has 500,000 people. Let's say you have 20,000 people. That's 20,000 desktops that you have to deploy this package to. With First On-Prem, you don't have to do that anymore. You update the code on the server, everyone gets the update. All they have to do is access it via browser, they never know. Some of the other benefits are, you know, the offline access. So it is an encrypted, secure offline access. Just as it is in the cloud, you'll be able to do that on-prem through a browser. Um, and then also, you'll be able to reduce your training costs with very simple, intuitive UI. So anyone that's used a webmail, Gmail, uh, whatever kind of uh, simple messaging system through a browser, it's not this big clunky thing like the Notes client where you have to really do some end-user training. We, for a long time, we, the Notes client is kind of everything and the toilet and the, and the kitchen sink all wrapped into this one big thing. It's trying to, put, you know, you never have to leave the Notes client. You can access applications, you can do mail, you can do instant messaging, but that makes it a little bit more complex. It makes it a large package. It makes it difficult to deploy. You don't have to worry about that anymore if you choose to go to Verse on-prem. The other aspect is if you are planning to go to the cloud in the future and your users have the Verse on-prem experience, when you transition their mail to the cloud, it's completely seamless. All they're looking at is Verse. They don't know where it is, prem, cloud. It's the same UI. You move their mail in the back end, boom. They're, they're migrated, no retraining, nothing. They don't have to learn anything new. From a hybrid perspective, uh, you can now have the same experience for all your users. Your cloud users, your on-prem users can have the same UI experience if that's what you choose. This is a, a nice slide here. This is basically the architectures. This is a very high level. We're not going to get into deep technical details here. Everything in green is what uh, existed. We took the existing Verse UI from the cloud. We're putting it on-prem. Pretty simple. Domino 901 Feature Pack 7. That'll be the baseline. There'll be probably a hotfix included in the Verse uh, installation package and connections 55CR1. Those are existing components. We didn't change anything there. What we did do is we developed APIs for populating the important to me bar and social content, and we really did a lot of work around the search. In order to give you the faceted search experience that you get in the cloud on-prem, in the cloud we use a technology called solar. Solar does not scale very well on-premises. We also did not want to put anything new on existing domino administrators to have to learn a new technology. So what we did is we took the existing Domino search technology and we optimized it and we changed it a little bit um, so that uh, now you can get the faceted search with your existing Domino search index. Here's some of the technical details here and then what I'll do is I'll kind of talk about some of the differences for GA 1.0. Um, from a platform perspective at GA we're only going to be supporting Red Hat Linux and Windows. Oh, one other thing. Windows 2016 is going to be supported starting in Feature Pack 8 as well. So that's a new add. We're going to take away um, XP. So XP is going to go away. Uh, and I think there's a couple of other things. Oh, we're also thinking about, uh, and we will actually, uh, we're not go after starting in Feature Pack 8 from a server perspective for Linux and AIX, we're only going to be releasing 64-bit versions of the server. For Windows, we will continue to do both 32 
and 64-bit releases. One of the reasons is same time limited use, the community server has to sit on top of a Domino server, and the limited use community server is only 32-bit at this time. So we're gonna keep the Windows 32 and 64-bit, but in order to streamline and get in this re regular cadence, we're dropping uh, the 32-bit versions of AIX and uh, Linux. Uh, from the from the servers uh, going feature pack seven and and, and on, so back to verse on prem, um, Red Hat Linux Windows those are the primary uh, what we call an IBM and this is an overall IBM software group uh, rule that they uh, told us about this year is they're calling this uh, you know basically you know preferred platforms you know these are the these are the platforms that they want us to release on so. We're not going away from support for SUSE or iSeries or AIX for existing Domino code, but for new offerings, we're going to focus on only a couple of operating systems. Red Hat Linux being the preferred Linux flavor, Windows as market driven as as the uh, as the preferred, and then we have AIX and iSeries that if we need to, we can add those as well. Um, Supported browsers, the same browsers that we support in the cloud will be supported on-prem. Languages, from a language perspective, all of the languages that we support in cloud will be supported on-prem with one exception. For GA, we had to take out bi-directional languages. So Hebrew, Arabic, Romanian, and I think there's one other uh, that will not be included at GA but will be uh, re-added post-GA. In order to get the GA out and in order to improve our performance, we had to remove the bi-directional languages. Um, from a sizing perspective, uh, we're not where we want to be yet for GA1, okay? So if you're in beta, you're kind of experiencing some of the, uh, some of the sizing issues that we're seeing. So we're never going to be exact parity with iNotes because we're adding a lot of new features and, and search capabilities that are stressing the Domino server in ways that it's never been stressed before. So there's some good news, bad news there. You know, the bad news is at GA, we're not exactly where we want to be in terms of sizing. And I actually have a call tomorrow with the development team where they're going to tell me all the sizing information. So don't set your expectations that it's going to be exactly like iNotes. Uh, initial thoughts were, you know, it's going to be about half of what iNotes is, okay, for GA. But we're working really hard to improve that, to get that as close to iNotes performance as possible. So that's going to be one of our big focuses post-GA is to make sure that you don't have to purchase any additional hardware. So for GA, it may be for a 1.0 release, it may just be, you're, you, you may not be able to deploy this to every single person in your organization without purchasing new hardware. You may want to have a pilot group, and then once 1.1 comes out and we start moving forward in 2017 and we continuous, continuously improve performance, then you can start you know, spreading this out over your entire organization without having to purchase any additional hardware because we understand you know, we don't want to make you purchase anything uh, additional to what you already have or what you've already sized for from an iNotes perspective. One other, uh, two other things that uh, we had to remove to get to GA. Uh, one of them is the, has to do with file attachment viewing. So you will not be able to, to view an attachment with the view attachment viewer if the attachment is stored on the server. If you detach that attachment locally, you'll be able to use the viewer capability but you will not be able to uh, view it if it's on the server. So that was one thing that was causing a lot of performance issues. So we removed that functionality for GA1. We're gonna add that post GA. The other piece is, if you're familiar with um, Verse, there is a way where you can sort your inbox. There's a couple of different buttons. There's a paperclip button. There's a little button that's kind of like a little squiggly thing that allows you to see all the emails that have links in it. The paperclip says, only show me emails with attachments. We had to remove those two view indexes for GA in order to improve the performance. We will re-add that after GA. So what that means is you won't be able to sort your inbox to see uh, emails that only contain attachments at GA. Post GA, at a later time, you will. Um, so those were a couple of the compromises that we had to make in order to hit this 
target date of December 30th. Um, but all of those items will be re-added post-GA. So a couple of things that here at the bottom, we have two other items here that will not be in GA. These were always planned to not be in GA, was integration of same time awareness and chat. So in verse in the cloud, when you click on the people bubble, there's three little icons that pop up. In the middle is a little chat window and it tells you their presence. You know, green for available, a little meeting, a calendar icon for in a meeting, or yellow for away. That's not going to be available. If you're same time limited use, you can use the web client. That is uh, free or entitled via same time limited use via the proxy server. That's part of same time limited use. So what you can do is you can pop open, if you want to go browser only, you can pop open a web browser version of the same time client and have that open in addition to your uh, verse on premises uh, window. Uh, in, in the browser. A lot of IBMers have multiple windows going on. They have one for their calendar, one for their mail, maybe they have one for communities. So they've got a lot of different things going on in their browser. So it's just another window that you can have open. But we are prioritizing that for post-GA as well, as well as possibly other on-premise solutions like Jabber. So you'll also have, be able to integrate you know, any kind of on-prem chat capability into the Verse uh, on-prem UI. And then also at GA, it's going to be strictly an on-prem solution. So what that means is uh, everything has to be on-prem. On your social as well as your mail all have to be on-premises. We are investigating post-GA the ability to hybrid, make a hybrid model where you can have your mail on-premises, but your connections, profiles, and files, and social can be in the cloud. So it gives you a stepping stone to kind of move slowly into the cloud. You want to keep your mail on-prem, but same time, instant messaging, meetings, uh, all of those things, it's okay to do in the cloud. You'll be able to do that uh, post-GA. So these are some items that we have on our roadmap. We're going to show a very detailed roadmap at Connect 2017 with all of our intentions for 2017 around Verse on-prem. Our focus has really been getting this out the door this year. Once we GA this, we're gonna, we have a list of all of the requirements. We're going to start going through those. We're going to start prioritizing. We're going to start building the cadence of how we're going to deliver these. So all these things we will deliver post-GA, just a matter of when and in what release and, and what order. IBM mail support for Microsoft Outlook. Um, so this we released in 2016, second quarter. This is part of our open client strategy. Uh, this is something else that's really made a lot of progress since we originally released this maybe four or five months ago. We already have about three post-GA releases of this, and each one has additional capabilities. I think this last one just came out, and it has the ability to do a corporate directory search directly uh, in uh, that. We're also exploring for 2016 Outlook uh, the integration of same time. Same time will integrate with 2010 and 2013 without any issues. It's not supported in 2016 right now. That's something that we're looking at as well. Um, so this is something that, you know, it's choice. Do you want to have notes? Do you want to have verse on-prem? Do you have, want to have iNotes? Do you want to have an Outlook client? If you have a business unit that requires plugins, if you have an acquisition that's coming over from an exchange shop, uh, this is a very uh, good solution to keep those people happy, to keep them comfortable. You have an executive that came from uh, a shop that's not, he's not familiar with notes and he demands Outlook. Why would you migrate? Migrating doesn't make any sense. Why would you migrate your mail from one platform to another to do the exact same functionality and then you still have your notes applications on Domino but you have your mail on Exchange and now you have two platforms when you used to have one and now you're paying twice as much when you thought you could simplify, you're not simplifying anything. But with uh, IBM mail support for Microsoft Outlook, you can do that. Uh, and so that is also completely entitled uh, for all of our notes and Domino on-premises customers, that's not an extra charge. You just go to Passport Advantage, you download the server, it's based on Traveler, you download a client plugin. You do have to have the Outlook license, so that's something that you have to take care of. You're responsible from a licensing perspective to have the license for the Outlook client. It's a small plugin uh, that goes into the Outlook client that allows that Outlook client to connect to a Domino server backend. Those users can, can communicate with Verse on-prem, notes, iNotes, seamlessly. 
So here's where we are today with our bring your own clients uh, strategy. You know, we started with bring your own, devi bring your own device from a traveler perspective. Um, so people wanted BlackBerry, they wanted Android, they wanted iOS. So with Traveler, we gave that functionality, we gave that flexibility. Now we're extending that to Notes and Domino. So here's where we are today. Here's where we will be December 30th. We'll have Verse on-premises as another option, right? You can have IMSMO, Verse on-prem, Notes, iNotes, any combination of all of those um, together for your users. So, you know, someone doesn't like Notes, great. Verse on-prem. They don't like Verse on-prem? Great. Outlook. They don't like Outlook? Fine. Give them iNotes. doesn't really matter anymore because saving you the energy, the time, the money, that you don't have to migrate away. You can stay with us and connect to your back end that has the security, the reliability, the replication, all the things that we know and love about Domino as a platform, and you can use any method to actually get your email. So that's pretty much it for me. Are there any questions uh, from the audience? I think I, I hope I covered our plans uh, for 2017 around the Notes and Domino roadmap. We're not dead. We're investing heavily in this space. We st we're going to start the, with the end of the year, Q4, with the mail side, with Verse on Premises. And then we're going to complete that picture at Connect with our application modernization announcement. We started the, the foundation for the application modernization with Feature Pack 8, which will be uh, around the time of Connect in March, end of uh, February, to get everyone up to date, get Java 8 out there, and then we'll be continuously delivering new features as well going forward. Okay. Se qualcuno, scusami, se qualcuno ha qualche domanda ma, per, ma non si sente, eh, come si dice, eh, pratico con l'inglese, non preoccupatevi perché c'è Eugenio che tradurrà il vostro italiano in, in inglese per Barry. What about, uh, what about the support of SLES? Because here in Europe it's quite uh, used. I saw that it's not mentioned. And, uh, yeah, so So all of the uh, existing OSs that Domino is on will continue be, will be continued to be supported through at least 2021. SLES, AIX, iSeries, they will be continued to be supported. What we will not be doing is new offerings will not be on SLES. So if you look at Verse on-prem, IMSMO, IMSMO we already released was not SLES. IMSMO was AIX, Windows, and, and Red Hat Linux, okay? So that's kind of, and that is a software group directive. Uh, it wasn't an ICS decision uh, to, to drop those platforms. It was an overall IBM decision to say these are the platforms that we will be focusing on across all of IBM, across all of our software group, and then we just had to fall in line. But we're not ending support for anything that is currently, that applies to same time as well. So same time 901, actually made it in before the directive. So same time 901 supports SLES, supports iSeries, supports I AIX, supports Red Hat. So, uh, you know, same time and Notes and Domino will continue the core and the feature packs. So all of the upcoming feature packs will be continued to be delivered on all of those platforms that we had originally released 901 on. Just new offerings will not be offered on those platforms. So. Qualche altra domanda? Yes. Um, verse on prem offline. Yep. Um, well, now let's let's start uh, in another way. Verse on prem. Are you going to publish, let's say, a function list yeah. about what is going to be in GA yep. and what's going to come? Yep. Kind so of a timeline later. Yeah. So at GA. We'll have the documentation that will have what will be in the GA release. And then at Connect, we'll have a roadmap where, that we'll publicly announce. So approximately 60 days post-GA, we'll have roadmap. We'll also have sizing information as well. We're, we want to really improve the sizing portion of the release. That's one area we were very disappointed in. We couldn't get it to exactly where we want it to be at GA. We, we had to meet that GA. We had to release that time. Um, we, had a, we had a directive from Ed Brill and from Inhi that we had to hit that target. So a couple of things, like I said, had to drop in order to meet that target. 
but we'll have a specific roadmap of when we're going to add those features and functionalities at Connect, and that will be public. Having the function list a bit earlier than that? Not, uh, not what is coming afterwards, but right. what is going to be available at GA? It will, be at, it will be released at the same time as GA because it's part of the documentation that the team is still working on. They're still translating it. Okay. So we're literally working up until the last hour. We are literally continuing. We were not going gold until the 27th. Okay. So we still have another week where we're still working. The teams are working right now. Uh, yeah, exactly. These these guys have been working really hard. They've been working long hours. They've been working weekends. They work until 2, 3 in the morning in order to meet this deadline. So, I mean, they've really, they've been working hard. So the development team, this is kind of internal. This is maybe a little bit transparent, but we have actually used a, a new method to get this out so fast. So what we did is we have two teams that are working on this from a development perspective. We have the traditional Verse development team that's working on this. We also have the services team. The services team, they're used to building applications project-based for, si for single customers. They're not used to making um, you know, enterprise-ready solutions. Uh, but they are working on the APIs and the search piece, the search capability, and the attachment service mm -hmm. as well. So they've been augmenting our existing development team so that we could get this out quickly. Abbiamo solo un minuto per un'altra domanda, se qualcuno vuole farla, se no chiudiamo e ringraziamo Barry. Nessuno? Ok, grazie mille Barry. Thank you, thank you very much. Signori, abbiamo finito. No, noi, noi siamo finiti. A uh, tutti voi vorrei ringraziare per essere rimasti fino all'ultimo, per aver resistito insieme a noi a questa conferenza. Uh, vi, vi auguriamo buon viaggio, uh, un ringraziamento molto sentito a tutti gli sponsor che ci hanno supportato. È stata una faticaccia ma siamo veramente contenti di essere arrivati fin qui. Grazie a tutti grazie voi. Paola, grazie Paola, grazie, Paola, grazie, grazie, Paola. grazie, grazie Eugenio. Grazie. Marco anche di IBM Europa ci ha aiutato, Amanda, grazie a tutti, buon rientro. Buon rientro. Qui però vorrei chiedere un grande ringraziamento per questi tre qua, hanno fatto un grandissimo lavoro, please thank these three guys who put up this nice event tonight, thank you.